do you think robots will take away your jobs as makeup artists? I know a lot of people are worried <laughs> their jobs are going to be taken. <laughs> See now that you know AI is it's broad. Mm -hmm. You can use it in so many different ways. With AI, it would really be good because then it means we're closer to the machine. Hello everyone, my name is Anil Nkomo. I am a makeup artist at Shades Beauty. Today, we are taking Sandra through a simple makeup routine. While we're doing the makeup, it should, should be nice to talk about tech and you know how technology has really helped us in makeup, you know. like. Hi beautiful people and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandra and this is Beyond Tech Solutely, a place for understanding tech and creating exciting narratives around it. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. So on today's video, we're going to talk about beauty and tech and all the tech trends that are in the beauty industry. What a better way to have this topic than to visit Shades Beauty Studio while she's teaching a simple makeup look like this one that I can put on when I'm going for conferences and I'm going to work and I'm going to meet business partners and I'm just going networking. So I'm here talking to her about how she has used technology as a makeup artist in Zimbabwe and all the other beauty trends in makeup that are evolving. At Shades Beauty, we focus on um, bridal makeup, events makeup for all kinds of occasions. We also do makeup training for simple makeup, glam looking makeup and professional kind of makeup. So if you want to learn how to do your makeup, you can come through. So today we are taking Sandra through a simple makeup routine, the kind of makeup that she can just get up and do early in the morning or whenever she's going for a quick run can look nice and polished. So this stuff is that for your social media? Yes. Do you use social media often? Yes, I do use social. I think if I didn't have social media, I don't know what my business would look like <laughs> or if I would have any business at all. Okay. So Social you know. media is yeah, I think it's the biggest tool I use. Okay. When it comes to my business. Um Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. those are the main tools that I use. Okay. I also use Google because mm -hmm. when you Google me you can find Shades Beauty. Oh, nice. So at least it helps people to know where to find me. The hours and yeah, working hours and all those things so yeah i think social media really plays a huge role okay yeah and how do you manage your book i have an application that syncs my calendar mm -hmm. with um, my bookings it's called app going to fix or, or it used to be called app going to fix now it's called goldie okay. so what happens is you you click on the link and then mm -hmm. you get there you book whatever session you want mm -hmm. And then it will just send me an email or it will just reflect on my calendar as something that's been booked. So I choose whether I want to accept the booking there, there and then, or I could review it and then accept it. Okay, so like you said, today we're going to be doing something simple, mm -hmm. not too popping, something that you can do in a few minutes while you're rushing to work or anywhere you want to go. The beauty industry is already a billion dollar industry and obviously technology has to be part of this. As you can see, Shades Beauty already uses a cloud-based booking system as well as social media for their advertising and marketing. We went into the details of how AI and other technologies are being used for this makeup and beauty industry. And also I learned a few tips about taking care of my skin and makeup. Stay tuned. It helps to even out the pores. You know, sometimes you have tiny pores, mm -hmm. so you want to fill them up, and it also helps the makeup to stay. So, do you collect data on the type of uh, customers you have and the type of events that they book? It's probably something I should do. But now that you mention it, I think it's something that would really be cool to do. It would help me to check how much. What kind of events I normally do and yeah, sounds like a good idea. Why do you ask? So that you can retain your customers. So mm -hmm. let's say if I come for um, an annual makeup, maybe for my birthday. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. I would know it's, it's that time again. Right? Exactly. And then next time you just send a, a message or a reminder mm -hmm. or a notification. It also sends us some 
form of customer care, doesn't it? Yeah. What I normally do is each time I have a client, mm -hmm. end of the day, I ask them, how did the event go? You know, like more of a social, just checking on the client. Did it last all day? Were you happy? You know, and all those things. So I would say, yeah, I do do follow-ups. But not in a in a very casual way. For a booking, mm -hmm. do they send you like a picture of what they want, or you already know probably what they want? How do you like? So whenever I get a booking, I ask, do you have a preferred look? Is there something that you want us to do specifically, or you want us to just freelance? And most of them will send me something that they have in mind. So most of the times when I go for uh, an appointment, I know what the client expects. So have you thought of having like a, an audio tutorial or like a podcast where you teach people how to do it? I like how you're giving me ideas. You, know? <laughs> you keep giving me ideas. Well, I, I guess it's more like a virtual lesson mm -hmm. where but it's a recorded one right yeah so yeah it, it sounds like a good thing because then it means it reduces the amount of interaction you have to have during follow-ups not that i have anything against follow-ups but it would be great i think let's move it in a little bit like here yeah. yes okay. it make my life easier it could even make my clients lives easier because then they won't have to wait for me or they don't have to be stranded because maybe I'm unreachable or anything. So how do you find out clients who, who have different shades? They want something that doesn't suit them. You have like something that can like simulate their makeup before they <laughs> before we start doing the makeup. Yeah. That would be so cool. It would be cool to have something like that. You know, it's so many apps these days. You can do just about anything, right? You, like we have um applications that can make you look like you have makeup before you even place any makeup on yeah. so that would be cool it means less work for me you know trying to convince my clients no this is not going to look good both agree on a look you know we can both agree that this is the look for you by just you know switching things around you know blue eyeshadow green eyeshadow Red lipstick, dark lipstick, you know, big lashes, small lashes, all those things. I think it would really make our decision making very, very easy. Okay. So I see now that, you know, AI is, it's broad. Mm -hmm. You can use it in so many different ways. And also it helps with producing of um, different uh, product lines. Okay, like, uh, there's some people you have to mix different shades of uh, foundations mm -hmm. so that it matches their, uh, their skin tone. Mm -hmm. So if you can have something like that on AI, mm -hmm. it picks exactly the shade of my skin mm -hmm. and then maybe you recommend something that if I do, you argument my face, mm -hmm. it then tells you maybe use the Maybelline line number 332 mm -hmm. so that it's not it's difficult for you to like figure out mm -hmm. which one you will need for like a shade darker or a shade lighter. Mm -hmm. So you can actually use AI for that. Nice. And prep your right? Because I've also realized this is one of the biggest challenges that people have when it comes to buying their makeup. Mm -hmm. Because the honest truth is, I cannot tell your shade just by looking at you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Even I, as a makeup artist, have to give you like swatches, different shades, mm -hmm. so we can really see which one is closer. Yeah. Well, now that we're talking about shades, we might as well just start figuring, figuring out. out what shade is <laughs> so for you. But I... with AI, it would really be good because then it means we're closer to the shade. We really, yeah. we're, it, it's a bit more precise. Database of all the makeup. Mm -hmm. and the shade mm -hmm. and then you're matching so let's say you say this is a Madeline on 350 mm -hmm. and a nice 20 mm -hmm. and a 7 mm -hmm. so when I'm shopping I know mm -hmm. the size I'm shopping this and this and this provides like a more customized uh, right. experience for me that would be nice you know with most with cosmetics you can't take it back 
You can because you've already it opened it. Right. Yeah. So. But maybe it works for like you makeup artists because at least maybe someone with that shade can then pop up two well, months yes. later. <laughs> well yes. Two with later. us, well it's not a trade smash. Mm -hmm. But for clients, yeah. it would really, really help. So these are the three shades mm -hmm. that I'm using to mm -hmm. test your your correct shade. Which one do you think would work? Which mm -hmm. one do you think is focused? The middle one. The middle one. Yeah. I think. I think so too. Do you think robots will take away your jobs as makeup artists? I, I mean, know. I, I just mean. imagine me going to a makeup robot. Mm -hmm. They can scan, see the look. They can show them a picture, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, are you not scared that robots will take out the makeup? Well, makeup is is something personal and quite intimate as well. You mm -hmm. know, you want to be able to trust someone. You don't want something that is automated. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many people would really be would feel safe. It's mm -hmm. I don't know how many people would feel safe with a robot doing your makeup. <laughs> no, no. It's it's one of those things that. Are quite personal and it has to be customized you, you need to be able to talk to somebody and explain to them what you like what you don't like and you know i think makeup is also about experience you know if you have a good makeup artist why would you need a lot of brides imagine the brides is getting married and they have a robot doing their makeup <laughs> no <laughs> that wouldn't work because you know when you interact with people, you talk about different things, you're able to I've calmed down a lot of brides. Mm -hmm. I've seen brides crying just because they're celebrating. I've you know, I've I've bonded with a lot of my clients just by doing their makeup. I've had clients who turn into friends. You know, I don't think robots can do that. They don't, they just yeah. do the job, you then. know, and it's cold. I think it would be cold. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. That's a nice finish. What do you think? It is. What's it like being a woman in tech? Is it fun? Is it something you always wanted to do? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, to be honest, I wanted to be an actuarial scientist. Okay. Um, That's interesting. I wanted to be actuarial science. Uh -huh. I was like, no, I'm going to do information systems and software engineering oh really so that's what you said so i knew i was going to use math data statistics you know sql queries mm -hmm. all these algorithms and now i'm doing like data i'm into business intelligence analysis mm -hmm. we analyze like the set of data if you are going for an album launch mm -hmm. In the upcoming album launch for Jack mm -hmm. Do you anticipate high volumes? Mm -hmm. What kind of people go for those events? Mm -hmm. What kind of shades do you have? Mm -hmm. Because most people think being overwhelmed with work mm -hmm. or overwhelmed with is doing business, but actually it's not. It's just that you just don't use your data well. But really? You really know, like, I have 10 people coming. Mm -hmm. right? You can still so really anticipate who's coming. Okay. If you're doing a discount, as much as they so that. And that helps with efficiency, right? Exactly. Okay. So I think now I'm seeing why I really like mathematics mm -hmm. in a business. I did fintech, I do a lot of math. Mm -hmm. If it's accounting, if it's insurance, if it's loans. Would you say not doing actuarial was a good thing after all? It used to sting me like being a woman in tech. It's so diverse. It's so me. It's so natural. Like I think if you talk to me mm -hmm. and everyone I talk about, like people who, who contact me, like just for consultants, like my friends, I'm like, what do you think? They always say, "Wow, we can see that you love this." Mm -hmm. I think it's something that I love. I can tell you love it <laughs> just from the way you're talking about it. <laughs> If it's actually right, I think I'll be like, ah. so okay. yeah, it affected me, but now I think I'm alright. So, God, only this good plan to yeah. How is tech in Zoom? Ah, 
we're getting there. Mm -hmm. The big companies are getting into like digital transformation. Okay, slowly. A slowly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the government mm -hmm. is also catching up. Mm -hmm. Some processes are, um, you know, mm -hmm. are not as they still manual because I think. So you were saying? So there need to be like a lot of frameworks that needs to be done, mm -hmm. you know. There's still a lot more to be done. Exactly. Okay. You know how we used to, you know, one eyeliner back in school. Just eyeliner. A bird. It was so crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> When you think of it now, the things we used to do. But you see how wow. makeup has evolved as right? well. That's good. That's good. So why shades beauty? What what is the meaning behind well, shades beauty? The full statement is shades beauty because every woman of every shade is beautiful. Oh, <laughs> so that's where it came from. So this is this is what we call a simple makeup um, look. It's nothing really complicated. You look polished and nice. Yeah. You say something that's happening. Yes. And you can confidently talk to people at work. Right? You know, makeup <laughs> always makes you feel good and more confident. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think? Do you like it? I like it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to try um, some colors. And with glam, that's when you can really have bold colors because everything is bolder, everything is really deliberate, yeah. you know, so yeah. All right, thank you I for having me. I hope you enjoyed me. your lesson. I have. I hope you learned something. I'll be sending you pictures. <laughs> take one, take two. I a lot of like AI, mm -hmm. AI on this platform. I'll mm -hmm. try and see mm -hmm. what lip color can I put, what, yes. what shade can I buy when I like mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed uh, all the beauty tech trends. If you have more, please comment down below and be sure to catch Shades Beauty. We'll put the details down below in the description box. Do high hair for all your glam and your makeup, for your wives, for your girlfriends, for yourself and for makeup classes as well. And until next time, bye. So the eyebrow has three main points. The starting point, the arc and then the tail. Most of the time the starting point is where your nose starts.